today on Be Something Wonderful, how to imagine your future into the now. I am your host, Tom Karen, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Creators, welcome back. I had a session with a client yesterday that was saying, Tom, I've always had this, this low-grade panic <laughs> in the background. I've always had this anxiety, but then sometimes this anxiety gets quite strong. But most times it's just sort of a chronic feeling that my life won't work out, that I won't get what I want. And, and I know you talk a lot about um, religious, uh, you, you quote the Bible quite a bit, translating the metaphysics of that. But I was wondering, how does science fit in? I haven't, I, I just joined your channel, so I haven't seen a, a lot of the videos. And I know you mentioned that there are, uh, in an email to me, you mentioned that there are uh, a lot of uh, videos based on science, based on quantum physics. But I really wanted to start there. Really, it's about my fear of the future. Well, guys, I'm going to talk about this today and more. Here's the first thing I want to say. And, and the reason I'm bringing up this idea of religion is because it was also a comment on the channel, I think, from one of you that said, Tom, my friends, but religion doesn't really resonate with them. I was wondering if you could put some more science in, in, in your videos. And guys, I, first I want to say is there's a lot that we talk about. We talk about quantum physics. We talk about wave particle duality. We, we, we talk about collapsing the wave. We talk a lot about science, right? But, but really, remember, science go, looks at it from the outside in. And, if, and remember, you're the observer, so you, and you are reality, so you're changing it as you're looking at it. So why do I always point back to the Bible? The Bible is a metaphysical book. It's the greatest metaphysical book ever written. Religion is different. Religion is a belief system. And it's okay, you can have any beliefs you want. We welcome them all, right? But if you don't believe in religion, that's okay. That fits because I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about the reality creation and how the Bible shows you the metaphysical aspects of creating your own reality. That's powerful because the Bible really, gets, really looks at it from the inside out. That's why it's so powerful. Think about this. Metaphysic, the metaphysics of the Bible is looking at it from the inside out. It's the only way you can because you are reality. You're creating it as you look at it. I really want to get at this. The Bible's not about believing in religion. Religion is a belief system, an organization around that sacred text of the Bible. It's an interpretation of the Bible. But I'm talking about the metaphysical interpretation of the Bible, right? And really, many times religion implies a belief that, that there's a power outside of yourself. So I'm talking about the power within you, that you're one with God that you're one with that creative power. That's what I'm talking about here. The Bible is an ancient sacred text that reveals the metaphysical secrets of creation. It reveals all of them. That's why I point back to it. It's not about religion, right? And we're gonna, get, we're gonna, we're gonna really break this down today. Re the religious interpretation is like there's a supreme higher power, God, that is separate from you, right? This is why in the Old Testament it says, fear God, right? But, that, but it's not saying fear God or fear the Lord, because the Lord means law. It's talking about the law, the law of being. And it doesn't mean fear, it means be in awe of, right? Be, be in sync with it. Be in awe that this power is within you. That's really interpretation. It just got reinterpreted, right? The metaphysical interp interpretation is you are one with and an individualized aspect of this one energy of God, love. There's no separation. That's the difference. Where religion, where religion points to more of separation, I'm pointing to the metaphysical aspect of one, but it's all the same message. So if you believe, there's no, every religion's welcome on this channel because it's all the same message, right? That there is a higher power. And whether you believe that higher power is outside of you or, or you're one with it, doesn't matter. It's there and you can access it right? Regardless of your beliefs. That's really what I want to say here. Science looks from the outside in. It takes an inductive approach, right? It looks at the what, what's going on, but it really never knows. And quantum physics showed us that. 
because it changes when you observe it, right? We've talked about the, the, the multi-world interpretation and the collapse of the wave and how they even actually fit with one another, right? Every reality has an observer and you're a multi-dimensional being having been this multi-dimensional use observing different realities. That's what we're talking about here, right? Metaphysics looks, it sees from the inside out. It's a deductive approach. It gives you a path. Jesus gave us the answers on how to do this, especially the Gospel of Thomas, but the Bible as well. And I want to show you this today. I am God. That's the deductive approach. I am God and I create my own reality. I'm one with that power. That power is within me. And I, I assume and decide who I'm going to be and the outside world doesn't decide for me. I touched on this yesterday, right? So let's get at this a little bit more. Anxiety and fear of the future, in, in, in response to one of my clients, comes from a belief that you don't create it. That's the only thing it can come from. You would not fear it if, if, you, if you really believe that you create it and that you can create it. It's imposed on you but from an arbitrary outside power. That's what you feel. You feel that there's some outside power that can mess things up for you. When you are that power, that's why the Old Testament talks about the Lord, the Lord or the law. Lord means law, right? To fear the Lord or God is to be in awe of God or the law, right? But it, but it got interpreted as worshiping it, as an idol, as outside of yourself. The awe-inspiring is the same Hebrew word for fear. So it's awe-inspiring. Remember, hear, O Israel, the Lord is our, is our God. The Lord is one. The law is one. Even the Old Testament said it. That would look contradictory if it was outside of yourself. If you had a fear of God that was outside of you, it says it right here. The law of the Lord is within you and works through you. That's what we're talking about. The law is that creative medium or that divine power that works through you, right? Which you make your, that, and, and it works through you and it is you. And that's where you can make your future now in the elsewhere here, as Neville Goddard says. That's how you do it, through your imagination, through that power within you. That's clear here. Let's, let's keep going here. Neville Goddard, Neville Goddard taught what? What did Neville Goddard teach? He taught that imagination is the God in you creates reality and is the only reality, its ultimate reality, that your imagination, that Christ in you, right, that God within you, that power within you, that I am, is the only reality. That's big. And he also talked about infinite realities or states of consciousness you can occupy, claim, and, and, claim and assume. So science fits in, the multi-worlds theory, quantum physics, it all fits in with this idea that there are infinite realities in states of consciousness you can assume, occupy, and claim, or, you, or in other words, you can observe. It all fits. Imagining your desire, your wish, already fulfilled, moving in your imagination to your desired reality. That's what Neville was talking about, right? When you are imagining, you are assuming a concept of yourself as that person who already has what you want or desire and is actually that and is already that which you desire to be. That's what imagining does, right? That it's, it, you are all that already. It's in your imagination. You are imagination. It is the only reality. So you can, when you, when you say you have it, you are it. And you do have it, right? An assumption, this is what Neville says, an assumption builds a bridge of incidents that leads you inevitably, inevitably to the fulfillment of itself. An assumption builds a bridge of incidents that lead inevitably to the fulfillment of itself, to the fulfillment of the assumption itself. That the plan is already in that assumption, that concept of yourself. This is what Neville taught, right? So... So the Bible reveals how, while well, science, neuroscience and quantum physics shows what? It tries to look at the what. Remember, when you're looking at the brain, the brain is, a, is part of your body. It's a manifestation of that higher spiritual uh, uh, firing and wiring of neurons that's going on. There's a spiritual firing and wiring of neurons going on that's above the physical manifestation of the brain. That's what we're talking about. Infinite states, realities, film roles, lifelines. That's, 
The, that's the dwelling place of the mansions that Jesus mentioned. That's your pure potential. That's source energy. That's God. Here are the, here's that. Remember, we talked about film roles where each slide is an event in, in 3D reality. And all exists. This is one film role. Right now, this is you in the current slide. Right? And here's the future frames. So right here, you're in the current frame. And either you're in fear or you're in fulfillment. Right? You're either imagining fearful things, which will lead you to another lifeline, unfavorable, away from your wish fulfilled, or you're, or you're, imagining, fulfill, you're imagining fulfillment. You're imagining your wish fulfilled right here. Right? Either way, it's going to either lead you to unfavorable realities. Here's the, here's the future. Or favorable realities, future frames. You're in the current frame imagining. Whether you're consciously or unconsciously doing it, you're either consciously or unconsciously always assuming something. Always imagining something. Neville gave us the blueprint to consciously create it. Right? But Matt, you're in the current frame imagining your wish fulfilled. There are an infinite number of these lifelines that exist. And you can move to any of them by imagining from your current frame your wish fulfilled. Going to the future in your imagination. Going to that dwelling place or that mansion in your imagination. Right? Here you are. You're either in fear or fulfillment. So the question is then, what are you imagining? What are you assuming? What are you believing? Are you, are you assuming this? That's going to be your future. That's the future frame. Or you're assuming fulfillment, right? Everything depends on your concept of yourself. This is what Neville says. That is the law of assumption. What's the concept of yourself? What assumption are you making? Who are you? And that's what you imagine, right? So that's what you create in your world. Fear is the thought and feeling that you won't have or won't be what you want. You won't have or be what you want, or you will get or be what you don't want. That's all that fear is. It's the fear that you won't get what you want, or you won't be who you want to be, or, you won't, or you'll get what you don't want, or you'll be who you don't want to be. That's all that anxiety is there. And why, and where does that root from? Where, is it, where does that come from? Believing this past unwanted state will continue into the future. Because remember, when you're fearing, that's all from the past. Right? You're, not, you're, you're, sitting, you're in this current reality in the past, thinking about that you might not get what you want in the future. Right? It's all in the past. The present moment is, is fleeting. It's always that present moment. God's only in the present. Right? And that's always moving. Now, 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 now. Right? The past is irrelevant. It has no connection to the future unless you believe it does. I really want you to hear this because most of that feeling or that fear of unwanted or, or not moving to what you want is based on the past, thinking that you're going to keep the, the past extends into the future, right? Thinking that your life won't change, that, 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 that it's uncertain what's going to happen in the future, and that's going to look a lot like the past, right? What you are assuming or imagining is either fear or fulfillment, fear or love. Do you get this? You are constantly moving between an infinite number of alternative parallel realities based on your assumptions. What are your assumptions based on? Thinking, feeling, believing, and assuming. Your assumptions create whatever you're going to think, whatever you're going to feel, whatever you're going to believe. That assumption or that concept of yourself determines everything. That identity of who you are determines what you're going to be thinking, feeling, believing, and assuming. Wow. Make your future now and, 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 and elsewhere here. Your assumptions, your imagining a place you mentally... In, so so you, your assumptions or your imagining place you mentally and imaginatively and energetically to where you are not currently physically. That's what your imagination does. That's what Neville's talking about. That's what Jesus talked about, which we're going to talk about in a second. An assumption, your assumptions, your imagining... Uh, place you mentally, imaginatively, energetically to where you are not currently physically to where you want to be in the future. So you're making the future now in your imagination. They place you there. As soon as you imagine it, you're there mentally, metaphysically, right? You move, you're, then you are moved by that higher will, by God's will, 
by along the path of least resistance over the bridge of incidents and you will be there physically to where you are mentally, to where you're persisting in mentally, where you're dwelling, right? So let's hit this a little bit more. The process, so what is the process? How do we imagine? Well, I wanna go over that today. I've talked about it in many different ways and I've even talked about it pointing to this in scripture, but I wanna show you that it's not the science that's gonna show you how to do this. The science is not gonna, is looking at it from the outside in. You've got to go from the inside out in your imagination, that God within you, that power, whatever you want to call it, the quantum field, infinite potential, right? That, that energy within you, even if it, it doesn't matter, it's not about religion. It's about recognizing that there's a power within you to create your own reality. In my father's house are many mansions, dwelling places, for I go to prepare a place for you, John 14, 12, powerful. This is the blueprint for imagining your wish fulfilled. What's Jesus saying here? Father's house is your consciousness. That's your I am awareness. Science says it. Everything is consciousness, right? That's your I am awareness, who you are. I am, right? Many mansions, those are infinite realities. Those are lifelines, film worlds, alternative realities. Science tells us this. Right? But again, they're looking from the outside in. This is from the inside out. Many mansions, many dwelling houses, in consciousness, in that I am awareness. I, I, right, I go, I go to prepare a place for you. That I is your imagination. That's your higher self. That's the unseen divine you. Right? That's that, that's that you, that's that higher you, that dimensionally larger you going to prepare a place. Go to prepare a place for you. You imagine your desired end. You illuminate your future frame, just like we show, showed on that other, uh, on this other uh, sheet, right? That the lifelines extend, right? You're going to go and imagine your future frame. You're going to imagine your wish fulfilled. You're going to pick a scene, a simple scene that implies that your wish is already fulfilled, right? If it's money, it, one of you were talking about the lottery. A lot of you have been talking about the lottery. I want to win the lottery. Well, there's a lot of belief. There's a lot of resistance there due to disbelief, due to you know the odds, right? And so, and so move to a place that implies it. Move to a place, maybe you've got a margarita in your hand and you're on, the, on a resort saying, I just can't believe it. It doesn't matter what the imaginal scene is. The power, the potency is in the implication. So imagine a scene where you're, maybe you're buying uh, something incredible, like a mansion, right? That would imply that you won the lottery. But when you, when you focus just on the lottery and, and, you're, and you're thinking about the lottery, you can create some resistance because of our disbelief that, that the odds are low, that it's hard to win the lottery. But you can move to a place where you're, where you're, where, where you're having this incredible feeling of wealth and abundance within, Right? Where you're, maybe you're traveling around the world. Maybe, someone, maybe someone's saying something to you that, hey, maybe you're loaning somebody a ton of money because you have it. It implies you have it to loan. <clears throat> maybe you're making a gift to your favorite nonprofit organization of millions and millions of dollars. That's what we're talking about. Go to prepare a place in your imagination, a simple scene. But place yourself there. Look through the eyes of that imaginal you. Right, Make the future now by moving in your mind's eye to the alternative of parallel reality. Assume it and claim it. You're moving to that mansion. You're moving to that alternative reality, to that new film world, to that movie script. Whatever you want to call it, you're moving. Your eye is your imagination. That's your higher self. Jesus gave us the roadmap here. Then what else does he say? If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Wow! The I am. That where I am, where your I am is, you must be. Do you see this? As you rise in consciousness, as you imagine your wish fulfilled, as you roll the, or illuminate that future slide of how you would like things to be as if they already are, you're moving there in your awareness, in your I am, then your physical you must go must cross the bridge of incidents and it must merge with that higher dimensionally larger you. I will come again and receive you to myself. As you imagine, assume your wish fulfilled, your higher self goes 
to the future, to your desired reality, because there's no separation. We talked about this. Science says this, there's no separation. So you always want to, science says it guys already. That, that's why I wanted to show you where it's the same message. This is not a religious thing, right? If that larger part of you persists, there's no separation. If that larger part of you persists and you dwell there in your imagination, you will be moved physically to where you are mentally or imaginatively. You'll be moved physically. You must be moved there. You can call that intuition. You can call that a gut instinct to do something, to buy something, to move somewhere, to talk to somebody. All of it, though, is that God's will, that dimension larger you moving you. You can call it whatever you want, whatever you're comfortable with. Nothing's off limits. Everybody's welcome, no matter what you believe. We are, we're, we're just trying to get you to believe in you. You, that higher you, that higher you that's in you that can create whatever you want. Not my will, but yours be done. That's what Jesus was talking about, Luke twenty two forty two. 42. Not my will, not my 3D will to make things happen. Not my doubting and fearful self, but that higher will will move me physically to, to where you are mentally. You must merge with that reality. 3D reality must bend to your new state as you persist in it. As you imagine your wish fulfilled and illuminate your future slide, you're moved by that greater divine will across the bridge of incidents to your wish fulfilled. That's what Neville was talking about. That these things that appear in 3D will be the bridge, but you don't know the bridge until after. It doesn't become obvious until after, right? Signs don't proceed, they follow. So, so, and I, I wanted to combine here the two concepts of infinite realities in the mirror, dual mirror, because one of you quite had a question of the dual mirror, they're both the same. It's saying the same thing. It's all saying the same thing, guys. That's really what I want to get you to is, is to show you this thread between all the teachings, all the ancient texts, all the science, right? The infinite mansions or film rolls or lifelines, that's these lifelines. Here's the lifeline you're on, that blue slide. That blue frame indicates where you are, quote, in the present 3D reality. But we said the present's really the past, because as you look around, all of 3D reality is already the past. It's already manifested, right? The, the now moment is in that dimensionally larger realm, and it only lasts for a moment, right? So how do you get there? You imagine you get ahead of it, as Abraham Hicks says, right? You get ahead of it. You imagine your wish fulfilled. You imagine that future slide, what you want, how you would like things to be. As you do, you move lifelines or film rolls. This one doesn't change. That lifeline plays out. That let all scripts are written. That script's written. So you move to the script or the lifeline where your wish is fulfilled. There you are. You move. And there you are in your current frame. Pretty happy here. And then you imagine again. What do you want next? as you keep moving to favorable lifelines. But if you're unhappy here, if you're feeling fear and anxiety, if you're feeling worry, then you move to unfavorable lifelines, right? Further away from your wish fulfilled. And the dual mirror fits perfectly with this. We talked about the dual mirror or the reality mirror is like a regular mirror, right? A regular mirror, you, when you look in it, you see your reflection, but you're the image on the other side. In a, the reality mirror, it's the other way around, the 3D reality. Everything, including you, is the reflection of the image on the other side of the mirror. There's the physical world and there's a the metaphysical world. There's the, there's the current 3D reality or the current frame and there's the metaphysical world or the many mansions or many dwelling places or states of consciousness as Neville Goddard talked about. This side, all of those... All of those lifelines or scripts exist. That's your image. So instead of looking here in the slide, getting trapped in the current slide, getting trapped in 3D reality, trying to change the reflection, because you're, the 3D you is just a reflection of your concept of yourself, your assumptions, or what you're imagining. In other words, the image on the other side of the mirror. And as you imagine your wish fulfilled, you can see here you are. You, you stay here in the awareness center that I am. You, 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 have, you, you have one foot in 3D reality and one foot in the metaphysical reality, right? You stay in that center, right? Present physical reality is here. The imaginative, and you're imaginally occupying your desired reality, and that puts you there. It makes the, it makes the there 
here, right? You now start merging that metaphysical image in 3D, and that's how you see it in 3D reality. It's the same idea. Can you see this? All realities exist here. That's where your image is, and you move there by making those assumptions. Then that image then becomes a reflection in 3D reality. You merge with that image, right? This is when Jesus goes and prepares a place and comes back onto yourself, uh, uh, and I receive you to myself. You are Jesus. You are that I am. It's within you. You merge with that. Because why? That where I am, there you may be also. Right? That's powerful, guys. That really is how to make the future, how to imagine the future into the now. I am your host, Tom Karen. And this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification button, like and share our videos. That's how we get our message out. You can follow us on Facebook at Be Something Wonderful. We have a group called the Be Something Wonderful Ambassadors on Facebook. You can join us there. I hope you join us. You can follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Tom Karen or visit our website anytime at TomKaren.com or be something wonderful.com. I just want to say, guys, it doesn't matter what your personal beliefs are. It's all welcome here. We have, a, we have an infinite net to include all of it. And I just want you to know that power is within you to be, do, or have whatever your heart desires, whatever you believe. Guys, until next time, this is Tom with great love. See you soon.